Hello listeners. Welcome to season 2 of the Masters Decoded podcast. I am Anish Merchant, the chief decoder. I want to thank you for the overwhelming response to season 1. Your feedback and encouragement led me to bring you season 2 of the Masters Decoded. The season will tap into how technology, artificial intelligence and other socio-economic factors have impacted my guest careers or passions. My next guest on today's episode is Vishwas Mutagal. Vishwas is the CEO and co-founder of Good Work Group of Companies. An entrepreneur at heart, Vishwas currently mentors, is an angel investor and has had multiple stints in starting companies. With many awards under his belt, Vishwas has authored two books, Losing My Religion and Kalki the Last Avatar, both rated as Amazon best sellers. Without much further ado, let me get on with it. Hi Vishwas, welcome to Masters Decoded podcast series. Really glad to have you on the show today. Hi Anis, I'm really glad to be here and looking forward to having an awesome uh, chat with you today. A speaker, author, an entrepreneur and now an angel investor as well. Uh if I look back at your journey Vishwas, uh you've had a far enriching journey. You started your entrepreneurship way back in 1999. You did it for a few years, and then you went back to work, and then you came back to being an entrepreneur. Um, How was that initial years versus now when you compare this entrepreneurship journey? Like, if you have to compare those two phases, yeah. So you know, I've been a teenage entrepreneur. I started when I was eighteen, uh, practically, and uh, I always had this itch that you know I want to do something uh, more than just usual, right? More than just normal. and uh, i always felt that you know i need to create things i need to create things in different forms and i was also an artist right so the uh, the my whole idea was to create beautiful things meaningful things and something that are uh, innovative right i'm and uh, i started become like this kind of a dreamer uh, my whole life philosophy was over uh, something that i believe that you know i'm special mm-hmm. and uh, i'm unique and uh, i want to contribute to the world mm-hmm. right so that kind of a feeling was there in me from uh, the beginning okay. and uh, i think that kind of manifested in uh, me getting into entrepreneurship because i felt that okay that is where i think really make a difference in terms of um, creating entities and making a difference in the society or industry verticals uh, giving uh, employment supporting families you know doing something for the nation and the world all of that put together right so i felt that uh, you know the only real thing that can suit me is uh, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. uh, of course I, i didn't feel it back then i didn't know it back then but i think in hindsight i think that's that's what i feel but um, back then i just wanted to do something uh, cool i just wanted to um, you know do something uh, more than usual like what i told you and the first venture i started was called uh, infovision mm-hmm. computer computer academy so there it was in north karnataka and um, i just wanted to uh, you know create a center where you know i'm able to uh, train rural students who can be exposed to computers mm-hmm. right so that was something that i did and it was uh, really good success uh, you know in considering the times that time i was the first person to get uh, internet to you know for example my uh, hometown gadag which is very close wow. to uh ubli and darwad so the uh, that journey was pretty cool and of course uh, i continued my education i was in rv college of engineering mm-hmm. uh, which is in uh, bangalore which is like the top school uh, engineering school in bangalore in india and uh, yeah so I, after that i did uh, I, i realized that you know i need to understand how large companies work mm-hmm. you know because uh, that is kind of a different kind of a professional setup yep. you know how do they build software how do they have processes what do they how do they scale this uh, things right how do they build a great uh, r&d unit for mm-hmm. example for an international uh, you know mnc so those years they gave us uh, gave me quite a bit of uh, exposure in terms of um, the processes that go into uh, into large uh, mnc so i i worked with the huawei and then uh, uh, you know motorola had started the unit here called freescale mm-hmm. so i was one of the first uh, people to join their you know company here in bangalore so I had a great ex- you know experience of taking that center to uh, you know from from small to about 250 people in uh, bangalore wow. so i was one of the first few people there right so that gave me like a very good 
uh, insight into how this uh, in, you know like really high end uh, r and d center can be set up mm-hmm. what are the engineering processes how do we uh, create patents out of india mm-hmm. right what does it go into creating patents for example uh yeah so i think uh, got a lot of international exposure as well because it was all international products that we were building um so i think uh, and then of course i started my own uh, uh, journey in terms of i started my own startups and then since then i've been a serial entrepreneur uh talking yeah. about your creativity and you said you know the dreamer that's what gave birth to your two books losing my religion and the avatar yeah yeah the first book you know practically was just happened uh, something I, i did not plan at all mm-hmm. and just happened uh, my first uh, startup right for example the um, uh, it's called jobbyhive.com mm-hmm. very similar to glassdoor but you know we we didn't have we had great traction we had uh, lakhs of users and all of that um, but the thing is we were ahead of our times i think and uh, we couldn't monetize it that back then so we had to shut it down okay. practically and uh, had worked on it for a couple of years and uh, burnt all our salaries and savings and everything so uh, i was at this point in time where i just i i just felt that and i'm um, you know i'm a big loser you know i'm just sitting at home and i'm thinking that i know i've lost everything and mm-hmm. uh, the world has moved on all my peers and friends are, you know they're in very plump position because two years is a lot in that time frame yep. you know you're growing fast so um yeah so uh, that's when i just wanted to run away you know from ev- everybody and then kind of uh, uh you know just hide from the world kind of a situation but uh, uh you know fortunately uh, i got a call from uh, one of the canadian companies okay. called castle rock so uh, they wanted me to be a, a ceo for their india unit and expansion right mm-hmm. here uh, asia pack so when i got that call i thought it is a prank call actually i thought somebody is just calling me to okay. uh, basically uh, you know joke or something so uh, but they said it was very serious and uh, they wanted to hire me i told them you know why you want to hire me you know you just see people are you know writing about me shutting down the company all of that you know how it is right so people write media only writes about you when you either you are yep. raising funds or you are shutting down right usually so uh, so blogs and all were writing about us so i told them then you can just take a look at it and uh, they said yeah we have gone through it we understand it uh, you are shut down your company and all but the reason we want to hire you is because of your experience in creating a tech uh, that is supporting millions of users and uh, you creating that journey of bringing so many users to the uh, to your platform mm-hmm. and that experience of building an engineering team so that's what we want basically right Interesting. so i think Yeah so that's when I uh, uh, yeah so I was 27 so I became a professional CEO of a multinational and uh, so that day I realized that there's no concept of failure in life basically um, had I not taken the risk of starting my own um, I wouldn't have been in a uh, you know position to be a, a professional CEO for a you know multinational because you can always start your own company and you can tag yourself as a CEO but if you have to become like a professional ceo for another company mm-hmm. which is a large mnc so it needs a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, hardcore experience in terms of dealing with teams expansions operations finance yep. tech all of that put together right so that kind of experience only a startup can give you yeah. so that's the reason why i think uh, you know uh, if you have your own startup and you are scaling it up even though it's a failure it's a huge learning so that's something that uh, that became the philosophy of my life basically to tell that it's okay if you fail right yeah. but it's not okay if you don't try this number one you need to keep trying and the second thing is you need to learn pick yourself up and move on right and uh, i think that is um, very very critical and uh, that became the basis of my book i thought i should write a book about it uh, and then i wrote about that's when i started writing about losing my religion and uh, i have a protagonist called rishi and uh, he's like a uh, entrepreneur in gaming and he wants to revolutionize the gaming world but he kind of fails but um, and then he accidentally meets an american hippie mm. who's like traveling in india he meets him and he quits everything and goes with him on a journey something that i couldn't do basically i just wanted to quit and go but uh, i felt that i could live that life in this book and um, 
also it it this book became the a transformational journey for myself as well you know i could really introspect and i could really think through what i wanted to do in life so uh, yeah so this book is uh, it's a, it's a it's a fiction it's a novel mm-hmm. uh, but it teaches a lot about uh, um, how to go about life in a very fun way and uh, also a lot about startups business uh, and travel romance everything put together right so i think uh, uh, that gave the impetus uh, for the book and what gave the impetus to last avatar the kalki oh yeah so that one was basically uh, it just happened out of the blue so basically that one was um, a very conscious effort for me which i think um, uh, this idea came to me that you know i love superhero movies i love <laughs> the comics i love the whole um, superhero uh, stuff right and i just felt that uh, although it is great that we have been flooded with the superheroes and stuff i felt that you know that we don't have enough content in india which is yep. indian which is very very high end but you know we don't have that uh, you know marvel kind of stuff happening in india mm-hmm. right so uh, it was a long t- drawn strategy uh, for me which is still in the making okay for me right i wanted to create something uh, my own universe mm-hmm. i wanted to create that but i wanted it to be very deeply rooted into indian um, ethos indian culture and uh, I, you know uh, and i wanted to create a character which is like set in the future not in the back because i just wanted to be something relatable mm-hmm. basically so then i uh, then then it made sense uh, then it stuck to me that you know uh, kalki is a great uh, character to bring in flesh and blood you know yep. uh, suppose this person is there in the near future and then there's a lot of war and chaos going on everywhere and there is somebody who is building amazing tech and uh, he's uh, trying to like basically uh, build the right kind of gadgets he's he has the right kind of uh, a team to protect the uh, nation and the world and how would he go about doing that right mm-hmm. so Uh, from a very layman perspective i have written that book uh, and of course that also became a best seller and uh, now i'm i'm in the process of start writing a new and uh, uh, the second book it's a trilogy and um, of course i want to do much more with it yeah. much much more with it like you know i want to create a universe i'm hoping that one day we want to create like uh, some sort of like anime or you know some sort of a series out of it or you know live action like movie and stuff right mm-hmm. and not only that i have multiple characters which i feel that uh, multiple indian superheroes which are really really deeply rooted in indian uh, mythology uh, not only mythology in general yeah. which is like relatable by indians yeah. right but it is very very high end uh, which you know it's very comparable to what the hollywood guys do uh, yeah so i've been talks with multiple uh, uh studios and um, of course it's going to be if it happens it's going to be very la- big budget stuff so that's yeah. the reason i think it's taking more time so. you are a man of multiple skills uh, and you know it's it's fascinating to hear what, you know the book aspect uh, and your thought process and you did say that earlier on that you are a dreamer and you love to dream and think about ideas uh building on what gave birth to good work and you know it's a physical setup it's not like your previous setup which was more on the digital side uh, mm. you know where did the idea come from okay so um, i'll tell you how um, good works as a group functions right so basically uh, today we are one of the most uh, successful bootstrapped uh, companies in india mm-hmm. and um, i think what started the, the first unit that we started was in 2013 mm-hmm. so it was a software um, you know uh, outsourcing firm or a software product development firm mm-hmm. it's called good work labs okay the whole labs concept came in because i felt and because i was in uh, california for for a while and you know was helping multiple startups there to scale up and then i realized that those people also have the same dearth of talent that we have in bangalore when it comes to how to build products how to build uh, amazing user experience how to build a, a very scalable kind of experience uh, you know which is like uh, global quality mm-hmm. right so because there are a lot of outsourcing happening but you know there are very few people creating amazing products yep. okay so a lot of tech is getting built for say back end systems and you know some kind of a b2b kind of a systems and you know where real uh, user experience real products you know which are used by millions of 
users uh, it's still it's still uh, rare okay now of course we have a lot of startups but back then it was not much in 2013 so that's when i felt that okay we need to start um, something that you know we are able to uh, help companies build great products and that's when we started like a design studio uh, where you know we are creating uh, great designs this design is product design not um, marketing and stuff this is about how to build an interface mm-hmm. how to what does it take to understand the user build user centric approach basically okay for uh, a design mm-hmm. uh, uh, and not functionality first approach the problem was basically people used to build products with functionality first approach okay so they are like okay i want to build a product and these are the 10 features and it's sent to the engineering team and uh, you know and the engineering team is like you know how does a design look like and then design is an afterthought mm-hmm. that's when you know the product started they fail because you know you're not keeping the user in mind who's using it so that's we changed that model we did a user centric model where we first understand the user we build uh, intelligence about the target groups and then we understand how do we need to build journeys around them mm-hmm. okay so uh, that was a whole thing and i think uh, we were very lucky so even before we started a company we, we won a project from uh, paris for a uh, for a super luxury chain called sc2 pont and uh, and then the next customer was flipkart in india so uh, because i had good relationships with uh, the team there and then um, you know they understood that if we can add a lot of value and so the flip one flipkart came on board then we realized okay there is something that we are doing right so i think then uh, that kind of um, took us uh, took us uh, to our next level altogether and then uh, we kept growing like that so for many years um, uh, you know we were the fastest growing tech company in india so uh, deloitte deloitte fast 50 we were the third fastest fastest fastest, or fastest growing company in ft a couple of years back we were the third fastest growing tech company in india wow. so uh, yeah so i think uh, that is the flagship uh company of the group uh, that we uh, we could first thing we created and today uh, we are very proud uh, that you know we uh, are helping to build technology for most of the unicorns uh, in india so you name a unicorn we are working with them and uh, we are working with a lot of uh, fortune 500 companies as well right wow. so and uh, we we take pride in who we are we help companies build great products we help them with great teams who can support them in growing this uh, products and go to the market uh, that has you know taken us uh, places so with that philosophy uh, what i realized was uh, in 2017 uh, we realized that you know we also need to figure out how do we work closely with startups mm-hmm. okay and that's when uh, you know we had a space empty with us it was like a design studio we had built it like a design studio and then we felt that okay why don't we invite startups to come and work with us mm-hmm. so that's when the co-working idea uh, started uh, coming so that's when we started with the good works uh, co-working spaces we call it good works co-work and um, that became a phenomenal success because you know we had created unbelievable designs okay we were very very good in creating anyway we were good at creating a design for the tech and then we just took that and then we the you know we took it out to the physical space and uh, it became really amazing so we won multiple awards for the best design so we we won bmw as a customer so we started like wow. from one center we went to like multiple centers and then we got tesco we got uh, multiple companies so you know it was like one of the fastest growing companies so it was uh, it grew like really really fast mm. right and uh, uh, but then a pandemic happened so everything came to a halt so we consciously took a decision of uh, keeping it on a standby so we didn't expand further till we figured out okay what is happening next um, so i think it's going to be interesting now to see i think uh, expansion is again going to start maybe next year 2022 onwards once things are back to uh, normal so that's that's like the uh, the second company in the uh, uh, in a good, in good works group and while we were doing this while we were doing the pandemic we realized that uh, there are a lot of companies in india india trying to do some amazing work right mm-hmm. especially trying to do uh, things that are for the future for example there is a amazing company trying to do um, warm vaccines from india mm-hmm. from iic bank uh or there is some startup that is uh, trying to do like an ev 
um you know like a you know like a taxi or like you know they're into satellites or they're into ai and ml something that is uh, futuristic and that is trying to help uh, the world to make uh, make it a better place and also make a lot of business sense as well at the same time so uh, we were anyway investing so me and my co-founder sonia sharma so we were anyway investing in startups here and there but we felt that okay a lot of people are coming and telling us okay do it in a more structured way mm-hmm. okay so that it it puts a method to the whole uh, philosophy right so that's when we felt that okay we need to start like a fund where we are able to support about 8 to 10 startups in a year and uh, we wanted to start small of course this is it's it's for early stage companies itself so it's like we call it in good works angel fund and um, we invest anywhere between like 10 20 lakhs to about 1 crore in each startup mm-hmm. so that is the philosophy and then of course we've invested in four five startups in the last couple of months now which we have not made it public so still deals are happening and uh, uh, and another model we want to create in that is we also want to incubate companies mm-hmm. what four five companies we want to incubate where we are picking up a little bit larger stake in it and uh, giving them all the support tech office if required and then capital uh, right so about 20 30 40 lakh whatever to, to and then build them out to the next level so the uh, that's that's the the model right now and we're very very uh, bullish about it i think we this is something that it just feels now okay, why didn't we do it earlier right mm-hmm. uh, and then we have got a huge amount of interest from both uh, startups and also uh, the other funds as well they want to go invest with us they they want to tag along with us so Uh, because we understand the the market, we understand how to grow startups. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be very exciting. Something that I, it really uh, excites us a lot. How are you able to balance your time between three companies now? Now I know Good Work <laughs> Lab uh, or the workspace is on a standby, uh, but yeah. how are you able to balance your time? Oh man, that is the biggest mystery of my life, and I think my biggest strength and weakness at the same time. Okay. So, uh, that's my personality type i i cannot help it so i i tried to fight it for the longest time i felt that you know i shouldn't be doing too many things i should just narrow it down to a few things and uh, i did that i did that for the longest time but uh, my mind works like that my mind is like it, it's got this capacity to do multiple things and uh, uh, you know it's like uh, it's you know it's it's got uh, the, the you know what do you say it wants to do more and i cannot control it basically mm. interesting so multitasking has been my strength and uh, uh, from the beginning and the two things that are really work for me how do i multitask one is the concept of concentration mm-hmm. whenever i'm doing something i put like 110% into that that's number one number two is detachment Mm. so that means when i am working on something i forget about the rest of the stuff mm. okay so these two combinations if anybody can really master this i mean you can do any number of uh, tasks it's not that that easy as you can as i make it sound but uh, it is something that definitely you can practice and you can uh, get better at it now sometimes i struggle personally uh, you know there is so much of distractions uh, yeah. around you whether it's your phone pings or emails or phone calls or since we are working from home now children around you or you know people around you and then suddenly an email pops up on your screen and it just catches your attention and you keep thinking about it it's a skill to develop yeah. for everyone i i completely agree and empathize on that yeah yeah and also a bit of a uh, curse as well right yep. when you're trying to do some things and you know it just affects you because uh some other things always going wrong yep and because we are scaling up right now and there is always something going right there is always something going wrong but i think that's what entrepreneurship is there's never a dull day every day there is some excitement or something going wrong so you need to like do a fire fighting mode or you need to prepare for something bigger right that's what the the whole journey is about do you do a switch off period as well when you're doing so many things do you have a switch off side like you completely switch it off yeah so i did that in the pandemic i think i just uh, utilize that time to kind of take a step back i did that very consciously for about 3 4 months i was in uh, either i was in the himalayas wow. i was in uh, um in near masuri 
I had gone to Harshil Gangotri and a lot of I explored a lot of those uh, areas in uh, Uttarakhand mm-hmm. basically and uh, or I used to go to Kork okay. in um, Karnataka so um, you know I just felt that you know I could really take a step back there although I was working from there every now and then but still it it, it gave me a lot of time to think and I think uh, that's if you look at the group companies right now i think they're they're growing at a different speed altogether i think that really helped me that three four months really helped me to take a step back and think through the strategy and i think it just uh, rejuvenated me in spite of being the pandemic and all the madness that came with that so i think it really helped um so i think taking a step back relaxing for a period of time is so important for entrepreneurs you know so that's that's very critical mm, interesting and for everybody for that matter Oh yes, I completely uh, agree to that for sure. Because uh, even if you are working, uh, you have to take your leaves. You have to take those breaks. Those weekend breaks are not breaks actually. Uh, if somebody says that, uh, I'm just switching gears. Uh, and you know, you did mention that you started working at a very early age, and you started your entrepreneurship at a very early age. Was that the dream that you want to be there as a child as well? That you know. was there a surrounding which incubated that idea yeah so my uh, my dad was a doctor mm-hmm. my dad was a doctor so you know he is um, and my, my mom is of course a homemaker and um, the but my family traditionally came from a business family so it was just my dad who had just gone out and you know he was passionate about studies and uh, medicine and all of that uh but then th- my whole family was into business so you know that kind of a it that thing was there in the surrounding okay. right and it kind of always fascinated me to uh, to do that but of course you know i up until i really started you know creating my own entities i didn't realize that i am actually made for it actually mm-hmm. right so see that that is one thing i always uh, tell right so the the thing is that you need to experiment see the reason when i say that why experimenting is important is because you never know what you're good at mm-hmm. unless you ex- you experiment and you never know what you really love so when i was small like i used to try a lot of things i i try it now also because that has become a philosophy of my life and there's so many things that i don't succeed at all okay right or i don't uh, enjoy it mm-hmm. so then i drop it and there if something that in spite of failure it still comes to me saying that okay you need to do this you need to do this that means there's something there that means i'm i'm either good at it or uh, i'm in love with something there for example writing mm-hmm. right it didn't come uh, just like that but i i wrote a couple of times even though i just stopped uh, writing in between but i it just came back to me okay you need to do it you need to do it yeah. right so so then i i pursued it so that's the reason i always uh, tell entrepreneurs and also professional students that the only way to understand your true passion is to experiment and uh, you have to care a damn about the world it's it's critical that you know you listen to your own voice and not others because people are always telling you why something cannot be done yeah right so they are always telling you why uh, you should be afraid of something why you should succeed all the time failure has no room in the world all those things but i feel that failures always will come no matter what you do they will come you don't have a option it's just sooner or later it comes sooner it's better mm. so that you can build on top of it and uh, you can learn from it failure teaches you so much more than success so uh, that is the reason success is important i think uh, but success is not a destination it's like a journey so success you need to focus on incremental success that's what is important and you need to choose your own pace you will not believe the kind of uh, because i work with a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of uh, uh, people in the startup ecosystem there's a mad rush to become like the next unicorn or you know you want to become like uh, you know you want to raise funds and stuff like that mm-hmm. but at what cost is is a question right so you need to define your own pace you need to define why you're doing something mm-hmm. um, and then need to have uh, intrinsic intrinsic reasons to do it and uh, do not get bogged down by social media right so social media has become the biggest 
pain and the bane of the society yep. at this point in time. It's good and it's bad both. And it is so much distraction out there. Every day somebody is either uh, raising funds or somebody is doing something awesome. So, and then the uh, rest of the people get affected because of that. Yep. And then they want to do something similar to that. But they don't know what other people have gone through to get there. Mm-hmm. Right? It sounds very rosy to some people on the books. Okay, they are uh, become a unicorn. They have become this, this, that. But, uh, you know, uh, startup founders, they have their own struggles. You know, they have their own uh, battles to fight with the investors, with the stakeholders, with the... Their, it's, it's, it's a crazy journey. Yeah. Right? So... You never know uh, somebody else's story. So that's the reason that you need to build your own story. and You need to be the hero of the story and focus on your story. That is so much important. That is something that uh, so many people have failed to do that and then they ruin their lives. Yeah. And in spite of being successful, they are not happy with their lives. So that is something uh, what I feel that just do what you love to do. Do it at your own pace and uh, don't... Uh, see too much of social media. So just <laughs> try to put your own content that's better in spite of even seeing somebody else. If that helps. Mm. Yeah. Uh, building on what you just said, uh, you know, I'm sure you are being pitched by many entrepreneurs today uh, for the angel funding platform which you have. And you did say that you're talking to about four or five where you're in the final process of making the the funding happen for them. What's your evaluation criteria? Are you looking for people who have their own stories or are they trying to replicate somebody else's story? So what we uh, we are looking at, uh, we are looking at, uh, first of all, um, a space where we feel that it is going to be relevant in the next five to 10 years. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is the first thing we're looking at. If somebody is doing something that is not relevant uh, or it is like, you know, you know, it's kind of a sunsetting, we feel that. So we don't want to invest in that because that is not the philosophy of the fund. So we want to do, look at something that is a little bit uh, futuristic okay. in terms of uh, where the world is going because that is the way where we feel that we can make a small difference on uh, where the world will go. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, we, want, we want to leave this world a better place for the children, for all the children. Yep. Children. So the, uh, the, uh, that is the first criteria. Second criteria is uh, basically, it, if it makes any business sense, because uh, that is very critical. And uh, also, if there is some kind of a, a traction. So, we don't want to invest in idea stage, uh, you know, because uh, unless then it will go into incubation kind of a mode mm-hmm. for that, for which we have a different uh, setup altogether, which we are still formulating it. The We are looking to invest in uh, at least some kind of a proof of concept has happened. Some kind of a you know, uh, validation has happened, you know, either if, if it's a B2B kind of a business, they have a pilot customer or if it is a B2C, so they have some kind of, an, uh, you know, uh, validation from the market or some kind of a revenue coming in or partnerships coming in. So that will help us to make that evaluation. And of course, the team is everything, right? So because startups are nothing but teams, the founding teams yep. are everything. Yeah. Right. So I think that is something that we look at the, if they have done something similar in the past or if they have that kind of, a, you know, the, the metal or a genius to drive it through. That is important because some people just lose it in between. You know, some people are doing it for different reasons, uh, all of that. That's something that we look at. And of course, we always look at whether we can go ahead and make an exit because ultimately, uh, people who are investing uh, alongside us, they need to get the return of investment. So we are looking at uh, some, we need to get uh, exits, of course. Yeah, that is something. Uh, yeah. Just switching gears, how has family supported you across this entire journey? My family is like unbelievable. I couldn't have had a, a better uh, family to support. Of course, my parents, my sisters, uh, they have been super supportive from uh, day one. Because uh, the kind of um, ambitions and kind of uh, goals that I have had and the kind of pace that I have chosen for my own life. And so it, it's difficult for people to be around uh, somebody like me. I understand that. Um, so, but I've balanced it out. I think I'm a family guy and uh, stuff. And I'm very fortunate uh, to have found uh, Sonia. So she's my partner in uh, all the businesses and she's my uh, wife as well. And um, so I think uh, it's like, you know, we are an entrepreneur couple, 
so that is like it's got a lot of uh, positives and few negatives as well uh, positives because you know we we are a team in ourselves we don't need anybody else so that's some the greatest benefit of it mm-hmm. and uh, so we are able to like uh, do multiple things and we are able to expand so you know she can take a look at certain businesses i can take a look at some and that's the way we have grown it now and uh, the uh, but the pitfalls are you know it it can affect both of us something goes wrong you know it can affect both of us and also the other thing is uh, you know um, yeah sometimes you know you don't uh, agree on certain things so you just need to like work yeah. it out <laughs> things like that but it's fun as well so you know i think she is a she is very different from me so i think we are like kind of complementing each other so i think we make a very diverse kind of a team she is more of a realist and i am more of an idealist yeah i am more of a dreamer she is more of a very practical person so that this kind of balance is around mm. very interesting it's a it's a <laughs> it's an interesting combination between the two of you yeah have there been any moments in this uh, entrepreneurial journey of yours which has been memorable for you specifically many i think many right some of the like the 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 first thing was of course um you know i had to shut down my one of my startups job behind it was a um, sad situation but something which we had to do i think uh, when i look back it is one of the most significant things because of if you know it, it because of the failure i learned so much and then you know i could really move forward and of course uh, the one of the thing with the good works uh, good work labs when we started it was bagging the first couple of customers is really good. you know something was a turning point bagging flipkart was a turning point for us uh, as a customer basically and uh, yeah so i think there are many like that uh, right mm-hmm. so that by having that they quite significant in it in their own way hmm. interesting uh, you know i know you are super busy juggling many balls right now vishwas but question for you is if you have to give advice to budding entrepreneurs or people who are looking to become entrepreneurs from a successful co- corporate career what will be your advice to them yeah see uh, entrepreneurship is like a roller coaster ride and uh, it's it's great and it's got a lot of rewards of living a life that is not uh, usual it's living life larger than life itself yeah. right um it's it's uh, it's it's everything but at the same time it's got a lot of uh, pitfalls it's it's got a lot of uh, issues in it it comes with a lot of risks especially with financial risks it comes with legal risks it comes with uh, uh, as you scale up uh, a number of risks that come into that you know compliance and um, a lot of other things right if things don't go well so you uh, as it might found if you might find it very rosy in the on the newspapers or in the media and stuff but uh, it's got a lot of pitfalls as well so i think you need to be prepared for it and sometimes life just prepares you for that i think with incremental success or incremental failures um, setbacks here and there it always prepares you for that but that's something that i think you need to be aware of that you know this is going to be a bumpy ride it's not going to be easy mm-hmm. and the that's number one thing the second thing is Uh, you need to find a problem where you can solve the problem in the market so that's very critical either you to solve that problem with a better product or something totally out of the box thinking with a solution or a with whatever it is right mm-hmm. um, and then i think focus on building a great team uh, build build a product in an incremental fashion what we call as a mvp the minimum mm-hmm. viable product mm-hmm. that is very critical you you need to focus on that don't do like 100 things 100 features and you know don't you know if they're not good at all right so i think do two or three features but do something really awesome be it features or product also it could be as it could be like a cake that you are making but don't do 10 cakes and you know all of them fail no point just make one that is like you are unique and awesome i think once you have something going on there and then you can build on top of it yeah so that's my only advice interesting No, Vishwas. This has been a wonderful conversation. It's been uh, far enriching for me as well to learn a lot from you. Thank you for taking time out. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, 
and hopefully uh, people listening my show will be reaching out to you or will be glad to connect with you yeah thank you so much people can reach out to me on my social media uh, handles uh, uh, vishwas mutkal so that's the thing i'm always available to take questions or interact um and it's absolute pleasure talking to you i think a uh, fantastic uh, discussion today thank you for listening in and we close yet another episode of masters decoded if you have enjoyed the episode please you can help us out by sharing it on social media i would personally appreciate that it's how we can reach more listeners and the more listeners we have the more awesome guests i can get in touch and convince to participate in these conversations that are a joy to have for me and i hope they are a joy for you to listen as well you can also help a lot leaving reviews on itunes or your podcast service of choice reviews are surprisingly helpful in supporting the podcast to get to more listeners if this episode has intrigued you i would request you to subscribe to the podcast to stay up to date and get notified to the future episodes with that i bid you and see you in the next episode